Hey, it's Richard Kossoff with Guaranteed Rate, richard.kossoff at rate.com. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the subscribe button. Let's do this. So we talked about FHA loans. We talked about VA loans. We talked about the benefit of owning a home versus renting. What haven't we discussed? Well, we didn't talk about closing costs. Let's think about it. If you came up with 5% down on a $600,000 loan, what is that? $30,000. So you would think if you have the 30K, you buy the house, right? But no, there are closing costs we have to discuss. Let's get into it. To begin, I don't care where you go. If you go to a mortgage broker, a banker, a bank, a lender, whatever you want to call it, they're all going to have their bank fees. They're all going to have their lender fees. Um, typically, this is going to run you about $1,400. Some places will break it up. Some places will say I have an underwriting fee, a processing fee, a loan doc fee. But I assure you, when they add it all up together, whether it's one fee or three fees, it's going to come out somewhere between fourteen dollars and $1,600. Plus, you have the appraisal. Appraisal can be anywhere between $600 to 1000 bucks, right? So on an appraisal... If you take the six hundred plus the fourteen hundred, I'm saying in fees, you got two thousand dollars in lender fees, even though the appraiser is paid separately. But typically, it's paid through the lender, two grand total. What about points? Okay, so this is interesting. You don't have to pay points. You can get, let's say, an interest rate of six percent and zero points. But if you can afford it, if you pay, let's say, one point, very often you can buy a lower interest rate. So when they say points, talk about percentage points. So you can pay, say, 1% of the loan balance and buy a rate instead of 6%, maybe you'll get five and three quarters or five and five eighths percent. So you'll actually have a lower mortgage payment for the life of the loan. And if you do the math, you'll find that by paying a point up front and having the monthly savings, typically it breaks even about I want to say five years, four to five years, you'll break even on paying that point up front with the lower monthly mortgage payments. And then it's all savings, right? It's all gravy after that. From year six through 30, you have uh, a lower monthly mortgage payment for the life of the loan. Some people would argue against that. Some people would say, don't pay the points. You'll refinance down the road when rates are lower and you'll end up buying a lower rate then probably for zero points. You can decide. The point is, is, if you think the rate's good and you want to pay a point to buy a lower rate, you can do so, have a lower payment. And the points, very often, talk to your CPA, you can write points off your taxes. So in this case, $500,000, one point's $5,000, you get to reduce your gross income by five k. In other words, about a third of that will come back. Okay, what about settlement fees? Well, out here we call them escrow fees. Back East, they call them settlement fees. Back East, they typically typically use attorneys. Out here, they use escrow companies. And what these companies do, they're responsible for collecting all the paperwork, collecting the insurance from the insurance company, um, make sure the seller pays, uh, signs their documents, pays their fees. You, the buyer, sign your docs, pay your fees. Basically, they coordinate the whole thing. And, uh, and uh, certainly, you know, there are going to be charges. Typically, they charge $2 per thousand plus $200. I think that's gone up a bit. That used to be the rule. In our example, on $600,000, $600, if you go $2 per thousand, that's two sixes is $1,200 plus another $200 is $1,400. And then you have some other fees they're going to throw in there. They're going to add up. In our example, I'm saying $2,000. You say, what are these other fees? Well, Here's an example of an actual settlement we closed. You had the, um, you have a document drawing fee, loan service fee, loan document signing fee, an overnight mail or courier fee, uh, demand fees, and uh, trustee fees, uh, drawing the trustee, and then also uh, a service fee for paying a lender. So it can get up there. In this example, I'm a little surprised. Here, my sales price is 800,000. 800 times eight times two is 1,600 plus 200, 1,670, $1,800. If you tack on another 500, what are you, $2,300? They charged for this escrow um, $3,742. If you get one thing 
from this video, here it is. You know how you shopped lenders? You know how you spoke to a mortgage broker, a bank, um, an, an investment house, uh, whoever, to shop for your loan to find the lowest rate, lowest points, lowest bank fees? You should do the same for, you should do the same for escrow. It turns out what happens is, is you're excited, you make an offer, the offer gets accepted, and before you know it, the agent says, we're gonna use this escrow company. No competition, you're stuck paying those fees, whatever they wanna charge. And I think that's how you end up with an escrow that's $3,700 against the sales price of $800,000. If I was you, I would call three escrow companies. I would say, hey, if I bring my business to you and I'm buying a house for approximately a million dollars, what can you do for me on the fees? How much are you gonna charge? Where can you save me some money? I would do that with two other companies. I would talk to either the manager or the owner and I would get, make them get competitive. Otherwise, you're stuck with whatever fees they charge. Okay, that's my, uh, that's my two cents worth on competition and settlement charges. Next, what about title fees? Well, there's two title policies. There's a lender policy and an owner policy. First of all, what is title? Title ensures, title ensures that you own the property and that nobody can come along and say, hey, that was my house. They, they can sell it. How did you buy my? The title insurance protects you. They protect against um, fictitious claims, forgeries, uh, undisclosed wills, uh, mechanic liens. A mechanic lien is when a contractor says they did work on the house and they weren't paid and they put a lien on the house. Before you own that house, the title company will ensure that nobody else has a say or has a lien on that property other than you and the bank. Um, it's really important. But anyway, there's two policies. Typically, you'll see two separate charges for title on your closing statement. Know that you just pay for one of those policies. Typically, the seller pays for a policy to protect you, and you pay for a policy to protect the lender, and typically, the policy you pay is less money. If I had to guess on a $600,000 home, I'm going to say title policy is somewhere between, I don't know, $700 and $1,000. I wrote down $1,000. Insurance. Well, what's a small house going to cost to insure for fire, for liability? Um, I put down here $1,500 for a uh, you know, a 1,500 square foot home. Uh, taxes. This is tricky. If you're putting only 5% down, the bank can insist that they collect property taxes for you up front. So when taxes are due, the bank has enough money in the kitty to make your property tax payment. In California, taxes are one and a quarter percent, and they're due November and February. Um, I think it's uh, due, due November 1st, late if not received by December 10th. And the same thing, uh, then the second half is uh, April, I'm sorry, due February, late if not received by April. Um, let's say the bank needs to collect six months of property taxes. Well, six months on 600,000 at one and a quarter percent is $7,500 a year divided by two is $3,750. So they could collect another $3,750 at closing, which is again, a lot more money needed to close. What's the total? When you add all that up, loan fees, points, settlement fees, uh, title insurance, fire insurance, property taxes, um, and mortgage interest. I forgot to mention mortgage interest. If you close in the middle of a month, if you close uh, January 15th, for instance, the bank will collect 15 days of mortgage interest from February 15th to, to I'm sorry, January 15th to February 1st. In our example, that is another $1,500. So when you add that all up, the total in this example, $16,750. So $30,000 is not going to cut it. $30,000 is the down. You need another 16000 You need $46,750. And you typically, just for the record, have to have probably six months left over in the bank for reserves because the bank wants to know that you have some money to make mortgage payments after you close. So it can be expensive, but there is some good things here. First of all, if you don't have to pay the points, 
that's 5,000 off the tab. If you don't have to impound for taxes, that was another 3750 off the tab. So really your, your uh, $16,750 in closing costs, when you take out the points, take out the, the tax impounds, you're down to $8,000. Um, here's another good tip. Let's say you're short on cash. What do you do? Well, better for you to buy the house. You agree to the price, a price of $600,000. Go back to the seller and say, listen, I need $8,000 for closing costs. Let's make the sales price $608,000. You give me the $8,000. Um, they can do that. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a problem. Uh, they still get their sales price of $600,000. You get $8,000 in closing costs. With 5% down, that actually will allow a seller to kick in 3% of closing costs. So 3% on $600,000 is three sixes, $18,000. So you can do the whole thing. You can do the points. The seller can pay for the points, the uh, tax impounds, um, the closing fees. The seller can you know, make the sales price if you have to. Make the whole thing, um, what did we say? Eight, make the whole thing, uh, instead of 600000 make it $616,750 with the seller to kick back $16,750 for closing costs. Or just negotiate that right up front when you make an offer. You know, you can offer, uh, I'm offering for this house $600,000 and I want the seller to pay $10,000 in closing costs. So there are ways to negate the effect of all those fees. Okay, this is Richard Kossoff with Guaranteed Rate. I hope you found this video helpful. Please click on the subscribe button. It's richard.kossoff at rate.com. Would love to work with you. Give me a call. If you have any questions, make comments below. I'm happy to chime in. Thank you and you have a good day.